How do we get into this? Um, but I'm innocent, so I'm going to get out of this school. I don't want to come visit you. I love you, but I can't see you like that. On April 19th, 2017, at around 3.05 a.m., an officer at a maximum security prison in Massachusetts was conducting a routine check on the inmates. As he moved through the cell block, everything seemed normal at first, until he reached one particular cell and was stunned by what he saw. Hanging from the window by bedsheets was the body of Aaron Hernandez, a former star player for the New England Patriots. Hernandez was once a celebrated athlete, known for being the first to score five touchdowns in back-to-back -back seasons for the team. Caught. Hernandez, touchdown, Patriots! Bring it up! But behind the fame and athletic achievements, Hernandez's life was shrouded in mystery and criminal activity, revealing a darker side of sports celebrity. Odin Lloyd, a semi-professional football player with dreams of joining the NFL, was found dead in an industrial area of North Attleboro, and Hernandez was soon implicated in the crime. Astonishingly, Hernandez was seen laughing in court during his trial. Even more unsettling after his death, prison authorities found the word Illuminati scrawled in blood on the prison walls, and Hernandez's brother revealed that Hernandez often feared for his life and slept with a large knife. To add to the mystery, Hernandez had confided in a fellow inmate that he was a member of the Bloods, a notorious street gang with roots in Los Angeles, but a presence across the entire US. What was truly going on in Aaron Hernandez's mind? And why did he ultimately take his own life? To understand the mysteries surrounding this man, it is significant to rewind back to his childhood, where it all began. Now, childhood is a vulnerable period because every young individual craves the love of their parents. But in Hernandez's life, his destiny was marked by suffering during the most precious times of his life. When Hernandez was just 10 years old, he witnessed his parents fighting every day. The situation became worse when his father would beat him after consuming alcohol. Although his father also helped him become one of the leading NFL players, the constant abusive behavior forced Hernandez to live in fear all the time. This fear was also evident in his later years as he used to sleep with a large knife and owned a bulletproof Chevrolet Suburban. However, everything changed when his father died of hernia in 2006 the time when Hernandez was just 16 years old. According to his mother, Hernandez never got over his father's death, which pushed him toward escapism that destroyed his entire career. For example, he became a member of a brutal gang, befriended people with criminal backgrounds, and smoked large amounts of marijuana and cocaine. All of this contributed to unpredictable behavior that Hernandez could not comprehend. On top of this, Hernandez was also diagnosed with ADHD, a mental disorder deeply connected with a lack of control over anger, rage, and poor judgment. His family claims this could be related to a game he played in 2006, during which he was hospitalized after taking a strong hit to the head. But no one knew that Odin Lloyd would become the target of his unpredictable behavior. And it all began when, just three days before he went missing, Odin and Hernandez were seen in a nightclub called Rumor in Boston. As Odin was dating Hernandez's fiancé sister, this gave them a reason to often hang out together. However, everything changed when, in the same nightclub, Odin began talking to some people who were against Hernandez. You see, on the night of July 16, 2012, Hernandez entered Cure Lounge in South End Boston. After calmly posing for a few selfies with his fans, he sat with some friends on the couch. But before he could order something, two immigrants from Cape Verde, Daniel and Safiro, mistakenly spilled a drink on Hernandez. Unfortunately, what happened next became one of the most brutal incidents in history. Feeling enraged from this accident, the security camera captured an angry Hernandez, leaving the lounge and entering his silver Toyota 4Runner with his friends. But he did not drive off. So for the next hour, he calmly waited for their departure. When both immigrants exited the lounge and entered their car, Hernandez pulled up his SUV next to their vehicle. Within a few seconds, one of Hernandez's friends yelled racial slurs at the two immigrants and fired five shots into their car, killing both on the spot. 
At that time, Hernandez was still one of the leading suspects in the case because the police were searching for his missing SUV. Yet, seeing Odin talking about that viral incident convinced him that Odin was one of the credible witnesses against his case, thus forcing Hernandez to make one of the most dangerous decisions of his life. On June 17, 2013, Hernandez left his home with a gun. He then picked up two of his friends to support him and shot Lloyd before dumping his body in North Attleboro. Now Odin's body was discovered when a jogger took a shortcut through the same industrial area on his way home. But this time, Hernandez's crimes could not be hidden for long. His biggest mistake was purchasing bubble gum at the gas station, which was found stuck in the gun shell casing near Lloyd's body. Moreover, during the search warrant for Lloyd's case, the police finally found the silver Toyota 4Runner hidden at the house of Hernandez's cousin, Tanya Singleton. In April 2015, Hernandez was sentenced to life imprisonment for Lloyd's murder. But what happened in prison adds more mystery to his case, a mystery that no one has been able to solve. When Hernandez's mother met him in jail, he happily expressed that he was more relaxed and less stressed there than outside. On the other hand, he worked out every day with the belief that he would soon return to the NFL. This belief became stronger when he was acquitted in the 2012 Cure Lounge incident. The majority of the inmates even cheered while watching this news on the prison television. To express his happiness, Hernandez even gave gifts like food and television to fellow prisoners, which is very rare. However, just five days after the acquittal, something big happened. On April 19th at 3.05 a.m., Hernandez was found hanging with bedsheets from the window in his cell. When he was transported to the nearby hospital, he was pronounced dead an hour later. But the biggest question was, why did he take his own life when he was so close to being released from prison? Or was there someone who took his life? If we consider his lawyer's statement, he claimed that Hernandez was constantly taunted by prison guards. In addition, he was intentionally kept by sheriff in a separate cell where mentally ill prisoners are kept. And when he requested to be moved to another cell, the sheriff always refused. However, if we look inside the cell, the circumstances hint at a mysterious story. When the police managed to enter his cell, they found shampoo covering the floor and large amounts of cardboard was stuck under the cell door to ensure no one could enter inside. But when the officers looked around, they saw drawings of an incomplete pyramid and the all-seeing eye of God. And below this pyramid, the word Illuminati was written in capital letters. In addition, on Hernandez's forehead, the Bible verse John 3.16 was written. Not to forget, all of these drawings, including the pyramid, the word Illuminati, and the Bible verse on his forehead, were made with his blood. Feeling confused by the circumstances, Hernandez's parents requested Boston University to study his brain. And when they published their final report, it was revealed that Hernandez was suffering from CTE, serious mental disease that occur in people who receive repeated blows to the head. As a result, CTE creates unpredictable mood swings, behavioral problems, or maybe issuing with power to think. Maybe Hernandez's career in the NFL destined him to develop this deadly disease. However, according to fellow inmate who spoke with investigators, Hernandez was heavily smoking K2 drug in the last days before his death. The question is, from where did he get those drugs and why did no officer stop him from smoking such drugs? So what are your views about this mystery? Do you think Hernandez was murdered? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.